know uh, somebody, I mentioned to somebody, I think Brother Stewart, in a, a few minutes ago that uh, normally I have about 10, about 30 pages of notes, so, but tonight I just came with 10. So, uh, uh, let's just, but uh, what happened sitting over there just a few moments ago was, uh, and you know, and God does this to me quite often. I can, I can study for a message and, and just believe that I've got just exactly what God wants me to preach on. And you say, well, are you hearing from God? Well, I do. But when I get to church sometimes, God, the circumstances or things that I begin to hear, that God begins to, to uh, point me in a different direction. So he just did that. So I don't need to do it. Amen. So we just go this way. So we'll just, we'll just do this the way the Lord wants to tonight. Amen. And, and Judy Bobeth won't get in the way. But. I do uh, appreciate Brother Wilson for calling me. Let me tell y'all what happened. You know, uh, and I know I just got a short time, so I'm going to try to do this as quickly as I can. But uh, uh, I was pastoring at Palestine uh, Baptist Church between Chatham and Columbia, and I'd been there about seven years, and I just felt like God wanted me to move on somewhere else and do something else. And uh, I, uh, I began to pray, God, if a if you need me to move, are you ready for me to move? Just move me out. Well, he did. And, uh, but he didn't put me back in, in the pulpit as a pastor. And he's kind of given me a, a new ministry of, of going and filling in for pastors when they're absent. And I preached a few revivals. And God's been blessing the ministry. So y'all continue to pray for Vicki and I as we, as we uh, go to places God sends us to go. And uh, God's been doing some awesome things. And, and people's hearts has been touched. We've seen some lives change. Hey, guys, we've seen people healed. Yeah. Amen. I, I still believe in miracles. I am tell you, uh, I believe my God is a miracle God. Do you? Uh, I really do. And because I stand before you tonight as a miracle. That, uh, I won't go too deep into it, but in 2019, I bled out with a diabetic colitis bleed. And uh, from all accounts, I was dead. Uh, I, I, they revived me. Uh, the doctors did. God just had me in the right place at the right time. I told Brother Stewart and him a few moments ago, they were asking, somebody said, did you see any lights? I said, I didn't see any lights. I didn't hear any voices. Uh, none of those things. But here's another plus. I didn't see any fire either. <laughs> <Amen>. <laughs> Praise the Lord for that. Amen. So, thank God for that. But God just sent me to Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5. Was, uh, my sister was singing that song. He began to point me in that direction. And, and, and probably about a month and a half ago, uh, I was in revival at Corinth Baptist Church down below uh, Winfield. And, and God gave me this message to preach there. So, you're getting it the second time. And whatever happens, it's just going to have to come from the mouth of God. That's all I can tell you. So, uh, Mark chapter 5, verse 21. And I'm going to use a lot of that chapter, but we're not going to read the whole thing. We're just going to read down to, uh, down probably to uh, verse 24. Amen. Y'all there? Let's read God's word. Now, I read King James. I don't know what y'all got, but that's what I got. So uh, it's a little different than yours. That's okay. But, and when Jesus was passed over again by ship to the other side, much people gathered unto him, and he was nigh unto the sea. And behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet and besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter lieth at the point of death. I pray that you come and lay thy hands on her, that she may be healed, and she shall live. And Jesus went with him, and much people followed him and thronged him. Let's just pray again. Dear Father, we come in Jesus' name. Lord, I realize tonight, God, that you're God. Lord, that this book is your word. Lord, I ask you tonight, dear God, first of all, God, that you would just remove me. God, just don't let me stand in the way of what you need to say here tonight. 
Lord, I pray, God, that you would just speak through these lips. God, the words that would help us, the words that would heal us, the words that would comfort us, and the words that would bring us hope tonight, dear God. I want to thank you again for the honor and the privilege of standing in your pulpit. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I want to share with you one verse of Scripture from Luke chapter 4, verse 18, before we get into the message. And it says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Jesus is speaking these words from the synagogue. He says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Number one, Jesus came to preach the gospel. That's what he mentioned. And then he says, he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captive, and recovering of sight to the blind, and to set at liberty them that are bruised, and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. So I read these verses of scripture and I see that Jesus had a, in his earthly ministry, that he had a ministry that just covered not only our salvation, guys, but he covered the needs that every person would have in their life. Anything. Any sickness, any any brokenheartedness, any downheartedness, anything that, that, that come against us. And I believe tonight, listen, I believe that, that people are just carrying around burdens that they've maybe been carrying for, for some quite some time. And I believe that maybe they have came to the Lord at times and, and, and offered that to the Lord and cast it at the Lord's feet the way the Bible says, but that burden just seems to linger on. And I don't know, maybe some of you here tonight have, have something that's been plaguing your life or something that's been holding you back or something that's been dragging you down. Because I'm telling you, we all go through that. None of us are exempt from problems. None of us are exempt from need. But if we read these verses of Scripture, we see that Jesus' ministry, first of all, was to bring salvation to the world. He came to seek and to save that was lost, but he also came to meet the need that was physical and, every, and, and any, any need in our life. And sometimes, guys, we forget that. We seem to get involved with the things that, of life, and sometimes we get involved in, uh, so involved in, 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 the, in, the, in the problems that we're facing and, or whatever it is that we take our eyes off the source of our help. If we go back to those verses of Scripture, we see that there was a man named Jairus, and he had a great need in his life. Man, let me tell you, he said he came to Jesus, and he said, I've got a daughter that's about at the point of death. How many of you ever had such a need in your life sometimes that you just, you, you just desperately... You were desperate to get to Jesus. Amen. You were desperate. I mean, there's been times when I was desperate to, to get close to the Lord. And Jairus, being the man that he was, because of he was, of because of who he was, he took a great chance in going to meet with Jesus. Being the ruler of the synagogue, being a part of that, if they knew that he went to Jesus, they would kick him out, right? So he took a great chance. And he, and, and he went to Jesus and said, my little daughter is just about to die. And I want to ask you, I'm praying you, I'm pleading with you to come to my house to heal her. You ever just got so full before God that you was broken? I mean, have you ever just had a need that, that you just fell before God that you were broken? The Lord wanted to allow me to share this with you tonight. Because some of you, I don't know some of you. Some of you know me. I've done work for some of y'all that have built houses for 49 years. Amen. <laughs> but listen, but the Lord, let me just say this to you tonight. My first wife passed away in 2000, October the 22nd, 2003. We were sitting at the table preparing supper, talking about supper, and I turned around to get something out of the refrigerator and turn around, she was dead. Just that quick. You know, it, it, whenever things, it, it's hard enough to face death. Whenever you know that it's coming or you're expecting it's coming, it's hard enough to face those things when, it, when you're anticipating it. But when it hits you all of a sudden, all of a sudden, that, that you're just devastated. And I cried out to God, Brother Larry, and I said, Lord, where are you at? Why did you leave me in this thing? And I want us to see in these verses of Scripture what happened to Jairus and see if you can find out or, or if you can compare it to what maybe went on in your life. 
When I read these verses of scripture, I said, I'm a Jair. No doubt. I've been to God and I went to God and I pleaded with God about great needs in my life. And listen, but it says there was also a woman, as you read on through these verses of scripture, who had an issue of blood. Y'all know the story. Amen. You read it time and time. We probably won't read every verse of scripture because if I read every verse and, and preach every bunch, many of y'all are going to be a choir practice. So we'll just try to get through it. So she said, and she suffered so many things. And she'd been to doctor after doctor after doctor after doctor. And instead of getting better, she just continued to get worse and worse and worse. How many times have you been in a situation where it seemed like you just couldn't get through it? And we may not be talking about physical things here tonight, guys. We may be talking about financial. We may be talking about family problems and, and on and on and on that we could just lay out a list of things sometimes that reach around this building and still not cover the needs that all of us have at times. How many times have you just tried and tried and hoped and hoped and something just would not go away? But we don't leave J.R. hanging now. We're going to get back to him in just a moment. But listen, but she heard of Jesus. She heard of Jesus. And she came in that crowd to where Jesus was at. I want you to know that it was not easy for this woman to come to that crowd, to come to Jesus, to be seen in public. To be out in the public with, with, with people because in her age, in her time, she was considered to be an unclean person. But she had a desperate need to get to Jesus and she didn't care what anybody else thought. She didn't care how they treated her. She didn't care what they said to her. She was going to Jesus because she had a need and so and she, and she knew that Jesus could take care of her. Somebody asked me one time, how do you know she knew that? I said, well, Jesus went around the countryside. He wasn't, and listen, he done miracles, and he done these things and that things, and people heard of Jesus, and you know, we heard of Jesus. In the age that we live in today, you know, the gospel's been preached, and Jesus has been preached uh, all over the United States. I know there's places in the world that never heard of Jesus, but we've heard of Jesus. We've heard about who he is. But when we have a desperate need, Sometimes we'll go to this source and that source. And, you know, I, I'm not against doctors. I believe in doctors. I believe God gave them the ability, and I believe it's a God-given gift for them to heal. Matter of fact, when they done surgery on me and took and removed my colon, listen, that doctor said, well, I prayed with my patients before I have surgery with them. If you allow me, I said, please do. And, guys, you know, God gifted him to do what he did for me to save my life. And listen, I believe in that. But I believe that anything, any healing, anything that comes in our lives, it comes because the hand of God created and the hand of God did it. And here's the thing. She heard that Jesus, and she got in that, she got in that crowd. And I can just see her with a desperate need, in desperation, trying to get to Jesus, to bring his, uh, her problem to Jesus and she said, if I can just get there close enough to touch his garment, amen, just to touch his garment. If I touch his garment, I'll be made whole. If I can just get to Jesus, I'll be made whole. You know, tonight, let me tell you, he's still the same Jesus. He's still the same Jesus. Listen, the Bible says just uh, Jesus Christ. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen? He hasn't changed. Listen, people change. Time changes people. And listen, we get so satisfied with, with, with the, the, the way we are and the way things are. And we get complacent. We get easy with, 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 with life. And sometimes life uh, leads us astray because it leads us away from our source of help. We put our dependency in this thing and that thing. We depend on our money. We depend on uh, uh, 
other people. We depend on this thing and that thing, and we take our eyes off the real source of our help. If I can just get there, I'll be healed. You ever had a desperate need like this woman? I mean, I, I, I believe, I believe she, she crawled through that crowd. I believe she got down on her hands and knees. Now, I can't read this. This is just Judy Bobell philosophy. Amen. This is my theology. Listen. And I believe she got down on her hands and knees and literally crawled through that crowd. And then all of a sudden, when she broke through, she, she, she looked up and she saw the hem of the Savior. She finally got close enough to touch him. She said, if I can just touch him, I'll be healed. Let me tell you, Christ church, if we'll just get a hold of Jesus, uh, just do what we need to do, whatever we must, forget about what somebody else thinks. Forget about that. I'm going to tell you, I don't believe your pastor would, would, would say anything any different. But just forget about what anybody else thinks about you. And go to Jesus. And do whatever is necessary to get to him, to just to reach up and touch the hem of his garment and just get a hold of him in such a way. And when you do, believe. See, here's the thing we do so many times. We, 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 we want to go to Jesus and we believe that God is able but we'll go to him and, and, and we'll even pray and sometimes we'll even gather around and pray and then nothing happens. And so we push it off as if it just wasn't God's will. Hold on. What did Jesus say? I've come to help those in need. Everything that you need. Amen. That's his job. That's his ministry. So we push it off. Well, it wasn't God's will. Now, I know God doesn't heal every disease. I understand that. But if we, if we come to Jesus with the mindset, if he wants to, he can. We don't. And listen, we shouldn't come to him with a mindset as maybe he will. Come to him the way that this woman did when she said, if I can just get to him and touch the hem of his garment, I'm going to be made whole. She didn't doubt, Brother Larry. She believed. See, this is the problem that we have. It's, that, it's not that we don't know that, about Jesus and that we haven't heard about Jesus and we haven't heard about his power to perform the miracles or to heal our bodies or whatever needs to be done. It, the problem is in believing. And Jesus said this, if you come to me, anything that you ask in my name, believing, it shall come to pass. So I want to tell you something tonight, church. Sometimes we just need to pray like those disciples did. Those disciples, listen, whenever Jesus came down off the mountain and, and he healed the boy, and they, they said, what's wrong with him? He said, y'all ain't got no faith, amen. Oh, ye of little faith, he said. And those disciples in one instance pulled him to the side and they said, Lord, increase our faith. I believe that we need an increase in faith, Brother Stewart. Our faith is not as strong. as fa Our faith is weak. And listen, we come so, we've gotten so dependent upon other things and other sources to meet our needs and to solve our problem that we don't come to Jesus the way that this woman did. And when she crawled through that crowd, I believe, and it's a rough job because, you know, those streets were rough. But she was going to get to Jesus no matter what. She was going to get to Jesus. See, we hold back sometimes because we wonder what people's going to think if we get, if they know we have a desperate need around here and this trouble, we've got this problem. Well, I want to tell you something. Anything that any problem you got when you're in Jesus. She wasn't there to tell those people about her problem. She was there to meet Jesus who already knew she had a problem and he could fix it. Amen. She came to Jesus. And verse 30 says, and immediately after she touched that hem of the garment, that blood was dried up. It says she felt in her body that she had been healed. I want to tell you something. When God touches us, 
does something that we know it. We know it. Amen. I, I, I knew God helped me. He said, but the servant did it, but it was the hand of God. Amen. Listen, she knew that something had happened within her and that she was well. And Jesus immediately knew it. He knew within himself that birth of power had left his body and went to her. And he turned around and said, who touched my clothes? I think he knew who it was. Amen. He just wanted to see if she was going to admit that I was here and I, I came to you. Who touched me? And he looked around. Fear had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what he had done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all about the problem, the truth. And this is what Jesus said, Daughter, thy faith has made thee whole. Thy faith has made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole. Be healed in your flesh. People say, well, Jesus don't do that nowadays. I was told by one man one time there's no such thing as miracles. I said, come on, man, every time somebody gets saved, that's a miracle, amen? That's still a miracle. Just getting saved is a miracle. I said, God still is in the miracle business because he's still God. He's still God. That's, you know, when we pray, we want to pray with an expectation, believing that whatever I've asked the Lord, God's going to do it. And it's easy for us in our mind to say that, but I want to tell you something. And I found this out the hard way, but because I, I preached, I preached for twenty five or twenty six years before I got down to what I really desperately needed God. And when it came knocking on my door, huh? That's when I realized how desperately I really did need. I could preach it, and I could tell you how much you need it, and how much you need to trust the Lord. And listen, but it, but it, it was like words that I was just speaking words. But whenever it really came to the reality to where I needed the, I needed the Lord, and I needed His help, and I needed His healing. Listen, whenever it knocked on my door, that's when it got real. Things get real in your life sometimes. Listen, God, uh, those, uh, those things that go on are real. And when it gets real, we'll come before God. And listen, if we just pour it out of them and say, I'm going to get this. I'm going to get this. I'm not going to quit till I, till, I, till I can touch Jesus, until Jesus touches me. I'm not going to give up. See, here's, here's what happens. We'll, we'll pray sometimes for this or that, whatever the need is. And we might pray once or twice, sometimes three times, maybe, maybe. And when we don't see God move, we just stop. We give up. And that's amen or oh me. Right? It's the truth. Sometimes we just give up what God's not going to do here. Well, let's go back to the man we started talking about, okay? Can you imagine... Jairus coming before Jesus and said, I need you to come to my house. My daughter's about to die. I need you to come heal my daughter. And all of a sudden, Jesus just leaves him hanging. Huh? Look at the Bible. He just kind of shoved him. He was back in the background. And he's focusing his attention on somebody else. And, and he's doing this miracle for this woman that everybody considered unclean. And here's Jairus back in the background. Jesus hadn't answered his prayer yet. Well, he said, while he yet spake, there was people that came from Jairus' house and said, well, don't worry about it. Don't bother him anymore. Your daughter's dead. Can you imagine what would have went through mine and your mind? How would you have reacted to it? If you felt like, can you imagine maybe J.I. J. was thought that Jesus had left him hanging and because Jesus had left him hanging, listen, he didn't get from Jesus what he asked for? Yeah. 
felt like you just left out from something? He didn't. Jesus hadn't forgot about him. And I want you to know something, church, tonight, that God hadn't forgot about you. It may, you may have seen him move over here and move over there. But if you're still bringing that need to him, if you're waiting around on Jesus, see, J.R. still get in his car and go home. Get mad because the preacher didn't, didn't touch him, didn't pray for him. J.R. still didn't get mad and leave the church because things didn't go the way he wanted. He waited. And there was news that came that was devastating. Man, your daughter's dead. You ain't got no, you can just go on home now. What was bad went worse. Y'all follow me? What was bad got worse. Your problem that was bad may be getting worse. It may have gotten worse. But God still hadn't forgot about you. <coughs> he still knows you're there. And he still knows you have a need. Said Jesus, as soon as Jesus heard that, what was spoken. Now, let me tell you, not only does Jesus hear what others say, but he hears what's in your heart. And you may be here tonight, you may be saying, well, I just, my prayer just hadn't been answered. My need just hadn't been met. And, you know, uh, I hear about this thing and that thing. But when Jesus heard that, he didn't turn around and look at J.R. and say, well, I can't do anything else for you. Now, that's not what he said. He said, don't be afraid. Now believe. Guys, I'm telling you, we live in a day where we better learn how to trust God again. With everything. we better learn how to really put our faith in God. He looked at J.R. and he said, don't fear. God's got the same word for you tonight, whoever you are. Don't fear. Just believe. Don't fear, just believe. And so he didn't allow anybody to follow him but Peter, James, and John, brother James, that, that, that the inner circle. Those who, who ones who were with him but two. And he didn't follow, allow anybody to go with him but those three. And he came to the house of the ruler and he saw all that stuff going on and the crying and the wailing was outside the doors of the house. Matter of fact, they hired people to go do that. And when he come to the house, he said, why are y'all acting this way? <laughs> That's what that means, doesn't it? Like, what's wrong with y'all? Well, what, what's wrong with you? Why are you acting like this? That little girl's not dead. She's just sleeping. Boy, can you imagine? They looked at, I bet they said, this man's crazy. I've been called crazy myself, amen. I've been called a lot of things. Listen, I've been accused of being bad to talk to. Can you believe that? Listen, I've been accused of a lot of things in my life. But I'm going to tell you what, I believe in Jesus. And he said, why are you doing this? This girl is just sleeping. They laughed at him. And they, uh, to scorn, they scorned him. Jesus put them out. Clean house with them. You know, it's not that he couldn't perform miracles in front of all these unbelievers, but I think he just got aggravated with them and said, get out of here. And boy, I'm telling you what, he just opened the door up. Said he went in there and he took that, the father of, in, of the little girl and they went in there where she was laying. Took her by the hand and said, now I must, may say this wrong. If I do, y'all just tell me after church and I'll say it right the next time. Talithi kuma, which is saying, I say unto you, arise. And can you imagine what happened when she stood up? She 
said, Brother Hughie, if, if you mean God can raise the dead, well, he said he was one day. <laughs> Amen. You better hope he can. Huh? He said he was. He said, I'm coming in one of these days. Everybody that's in the grave is going to hear my voice and they'll rise to life everlasting if they believe in him. Now, I don't know. I didn't have a piece of paper wrote out that said I was, I had my life at sea. But I do know there was 30 or 40 people in there that said, man, this is a miracle. <laughs> wow, this is a miracle. I forgot what number it is whenever they declare you dead when your humor broken so low, but mine was two. <laughs> and I'm here. Amen. <laughs> All I can say is God touched me in a miraculous way. See, I did that twice. Listen, you may have waited, you may have been, you may have felt like God forgot all about you. And you may have been crying out for a need to, for God for quite some time. Guess what? Jairus didn't give up. He's going to give up. But God still said he's going to give up. Amen. God still said he's able. I thank you so much for your time. I don't know. Maybe you've got a need. You do? Maybe you've got a need tonight. I don't know how much time we've got left. Four o'clock, I think. I would get to ask you to do a scripture stand if you would with me tonight. But they just, you know what's on, what's on your mind. You know the need that's in your heart. And it might just be somebody that's lost that you've been praying for. And God hasn't answered that prayer. Well, let me give you a little hope. My mother and daddy raised 11 kids. Seven boys and four girls. I was right in the middle. Three boys and two girls older than me. Three boys and two girls younger than me. My daddy took us to church. He was pastor for 60 years. And I was a drug baby. I drugged my little sister and my boy baby. Amen. But I, I was baptized three times. Creek and Tarma tadpoles that all needed to stay for sure to learn. Amen. And I'd go in the center in the water rifling when I was up. Thirty nine years old. preaching five times a week at my place so it happened and we had a pastor that come here my dad come preach one, one night and he preached a message on God is more faithful than we are my mother had passed away two years before I got saved and dad went in and <coughs> said uh, when I called him told him I got saved he said I knew it was real at that time I could tell by the sound of his voice that it was really real this time I went into the living room where Judy's mama's picture was hanging on the wall. And he said, I was jumping up and down shouting, I don't really want him. I don't need him. And he said, let me tell you, don't give up. Don't give up on your love. God made a promise, Brother Larry, when I solicited him in jail for that jailer. He said, believe in, if you just believe in the name of the Lord, thou shalt be saved. God just wanted to share that with you. Some of you, somebody needs to hear that. Let's just pray tonight. Father, we, we do come in Jesus' name. And Lord, we realize that, God, that you are an almighty God. God, that you're awesome. And 
God, we know, God, there's no power that's greater than you. And Lord, tonight, God, I don't know the need that's in this place. But God, apparently you do it because you changed my mind on the message to preach. And Lord, I pray tonight that, God, that something that's been said in this place tonight would strike home to someone. And God, that, Lord, that what, you've been, what they've been asking and what they've been seeking, Lord, will come to pass. Lord, we're still, we do pray for those that were mentioned tonight. There's many that were mentioned were sick, many lost loved ones. But God, you're not only the God that heals, you're the God of comfort. And Lord, we're asking you to put your hand upon them, God, and do that that only you can do. And Lord, we're going to give you the glory for it right now. And in fact, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord.